Hmm. Was that thumbnail I used a little bit too clickbaity, you think? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, I could have made it way worse. I could, if I wanted to be serious clickbait, I could have just thrown up an image of Fubuki's tits as the thumbnail and been like, One Punch Man Season 2! Um, but no, I, I, I didn't go that far with it. Alright, so in this video, in case you didn't know, we're going to be theorizing and speculating like a motherfucker for One Punch Man Season 2 coming at some point in the future. We don't know. Although I did hear a rumor recently, gotta love those, but I did hear a rumor recently that uh, there is going to be an announcement next month, September of 2016, uh, for when the uh, the start date or like the release date for the anime is going to be released. Um, don't get your hopes up. I know I've been saying that quite, a, quite often, considering Bleach and everything. You're like, don't get your hopes up, but... You know, it's out there, so we'll see what happens. Uh, it certainly is a very popular anime, not just in Japan. Uh, worldwide, I'd say, especially in the States. We also have uh, the, the English dub that's running on Toonami right now. Um, yeah, you know, and also, I, I like the English dub. I did. Saitama's voice, uh, at, at first when I saw the trailer, I was like, I wasn't really sure. I know uh, Max Middleman got a lot of hate. Um, I, I was like, you know, I don't really see myself liking it right now just for the trailer, but I'm not, I'm gonna hold off until I see a few episodes and it might grow on me, and lo and behold it did. I think he's a good VA for that. Um, Genos is still... Okay, his, his is growing on me, but, uh, it took longer than Saitama's. Even now with Genos, I'm still a little bit, eh, but... Okay, that's enough of my personal opinion on the VAs for the English dub. I'm sure many of you will get into a war below on why the English dub sucks and is far inferior to anything that the original Japanese could uh, come out to. So anyway, um, yeah, so season two of One Punch Man, we're basically just going to be discussing what uh, we think will happen, if it will follow, you know, what uh, included in the manga will show up in this season. Uh, we're just going to assume it's a standard 12-episode season here. Uh, Madhouse is always a little bit weird whenever, you know, um, comes out with its series. You know, some series get two seasons. Most of them don't, I'd say, with Madhouse. Uh, some of my, some of the ones that are really popular, too, like um, Death Parade. I love Death Parade. I would love to see a second season of Death Parade. Even if it was, like, anime-only shit they were coming up with, that was a good series. I'd like to see that more, like, expanded upon, like, that world. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's all in their court now. I know Murata came out and he said, you know, I'm gonna try really hard for season two, but, you know, once again, he's just a mangaka. So he doesn't really have a lot of sway. That ball is pretty much entirely in Madhouse's court right now. But it's cool to have somebody on our side anyway. Right, well, Season 1 of One Punch Man ended with the climactic fight uh, between Saitama and Boros, the leader of the Dark Matter Thieves. Epic final battle with one serious punch. It was ended. Uh, we got to see all the S-Class heroes. It was it was a very fitting end of, uh, of of the season. There was a point there where we were getting to the end of the season. I'm like, how are they going to cram that entire fucking alien shit in like the last three episodes? And hey, lo and behold, they did it. You got to cut out all the end, cut out any extra bullshit, and just get right to it, man. Uh, with that being said, I think it's very likely that season two might actually catch up to the manga as it currently exists right now. If not right where we are right now now extremely close to where we are right now so the two things that we're gonna see for certain in one punch man season two if it's ever released two things we're absolutely going to get uh is the little mini arc featuring king and the mini arc featuring fabuki those are the two things we're mainly going to get immediately after um the uh, alien invasion arc with Boros. We had the little mini arc introducing uh, King, uh, well, properly introducing him as the S rank seven of uh, the Hero Association. Now, King is probably one of my favorite uh, One Punch Man characters, and when I discovered the um, the joke about his character, what his character really turned out to be. I must have laughed for a good five minutes after that, after I, I read that chapter. It was just so fucking beautiful. I absolutely... I, I, I think it worked perfectly. It worked absolutely perfect, and it, it answered the solid question that I think a lot of people had as soon as the Hero Association was introduced, and as soon as Saitama, after he had that uh, first conflict with Sonic, and he's like, nobody knows who I am. And I started like, well, okay, who the fuck has been getting all the credit for all the giant, huge, giant monster that's the size of a 50-story building just stomping around, wiping out cities casually, that just all of a sudden just drops fucking dead. Who's going to get the credit for that? And I'm like, okay, then we see all the S-ranked heroes, and we see King, the world's strongest man. 
who's ranked seventh. I know it doesn't always go by strength, but you think he'd be ranked a little bit higher than that. Anyway, yeah, so I'm like, all right, that makes sense that he gets the credit. And then it turns out that it's not just like King is somebody that's, you know, like playing on it like, oh, oh, oh I'm going to take all the credit for Saitama's kills. No, it turns out he's he's less than just a normal hero. He's not even a hero. He's a fucking otaku, and that's beautiful, especially with the face faults. It's great. So, funny thing, though, is his voice. The voice actor in the Japanese, uh, I, I gotta say, it was very deep, very, like, very uh, serious voice he had, you know, the, the few times that he spoke in the English, I, I mean, in the Japanese. You know, so I'm wondering if, at the time they cast King, number one, were they aware of uh, what his character was going to go down, you know, what his character was going to turn out to be. Uh, or number two, it's like, did they know, but they just didn't know they were going to get a season two. They was like, it's like, well, King's just going to be a character that's only going to have a very few speaking lines, so there's no point in trying to be really difficult with the casting. He looks like a really scary motherfucker, so just get, sound get somebody that sounds like a really scary motherfucker with a really low voice. I'm not saying that kind of voice doesn't suit King, but I always imagined that whenever he appears in public, as with the S-Class meeting and everything like that, King's voice is very... Uh, he, he makes it so it's very deep. Anybody can do that. Even me with my really fucking squeaky-ass voice, if I really wanted to put some effort into it, I could be like... Hello, I'm Tekken 101 here. I mean, it wouldn't make much sense, but King has the face to pull it off. You know, he's got the badass sc scars and shit. Um, I always imagine that after he revealed his true nature and like, oh my god, I'm an otaku, he would be like, oh, <laughs> okay, I get the new, the new, um, you know, happy sisters romance fun fun game to play. You know, he would go into the more, you know, high-pitched kind of voice or something. Another voice other than the really deep one. I don't know if it would really suit him in that needs. But I don't know, I don't know. Maybe that would add to the humor. Maybe that would make it more funny for him to just uh, have that really low voice while playing, while watching some Super Sentai shit going on. I, I don't know. Maybe it would. What's your opinion on that? But, uh, yeah, the King stuff really wouldn't take that long. Maybe, like, only, like, the two episodes to start off the season, and that would just be a great way to do it. Uh, we basically have King's introduction, and then G4 comes up, you know, challenges him, then we find out about, you know, King's true nature. Genos shows up to fight against G4, de uh, destroys that robot, and then you have the moment with Saitama and King's apartment. I think all that shit could be accomplished in two episodes, really. We can knock that out, no problem. You might also notice that in the One Punch Man manga, and the redrawn by Murata anyway, uh, there's a lot of fucking bonus chapters. A shit ton of bonus chapters. A lot of which I would love to see animated. We didn't get to see any in the... Um, Season one. If if we only, if we did, it was only like one or two. I don't even think we got to see that many. Uh, but um, yeah, I would like I would love to see a lot of the bonus stuff because the bonus stuff's really hilarious shit. Um, taking advantage of the of the comedic element of One Punch Man, I would love to see the one where uh, the the chapter where Metal Knight reconstructs City A. And he makes the new hero association where he has the fucking ad at walker and, you know, Tank Taunt Master comes out and tries to fight it. You know, I'd like to see that. Uh, the one where um, uh, Saitama joins that group of B-class heroes to go take down that, like, Godzilla thing. That'd be fucking amazing to see animated. Um, honestly, I think that's what I really wish they would have done with the OVAs. That, that would have been perfect for the OVAs. There, some of which, some of the bonus chapters are as long as normal chapters, uh, but some of them are not. Some of them are shorter than that. I mean, that would have been perfect opportunities to do the OVAs. And I like the OVAs. The one with Fubuki and Tatsumaki was good. The last one with the murder mystery with Zombie Man, that was good. But um, I, I, the one with Sonic, I didn't wasn't a big fan of. You, like, you could have mixed it around to add in, like, the, the prison, the prison sub-manga where you get introduced to Puri Puri Prisoner. That would have been great to show as an OVA, uh, which, you know, but, you know, what, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Road to Hero, of course, was still awesome. Um, but Road to Hero was more of a, an intended to be like a full episode sort of OVA, not like little mini OVAs that were only like 15 minutes long or whatever. Um, but yeah, okay, so moving after King, a uh, few, you know, buffer chapters in between, uh, most of which are kind of setting up Chun Rocco and Bang. A lot of them are focused on him. But the next main thing is we get to see uh, Fubuki's proper introduction. Now, she did get an introduction in Season 1, uh, very briefly, I believe, in Episode 6. Uh, 
Um, but we didn't really get to see much more of her. I don't even think we really got to get, uh, you know, cementing in the fact that she is Tatsumaki's sister. We did in the OVA, but not in the episode she was introduced in. So, um... Yeah, Fubuki's introduction is she approaches Saitama because he's now in B-Class and he's rising through the ranks to try to recruit Saitama. You know, he beats the shit out of Eyelashes and Mountain Ape, and then that evolves into a fight between Fubuki and Saitama, which then Sonic shows up and shit gets crazy. Uh, once again, I could see... Honestly, I could probably see that going down in one episode, maybe. Maybe two, at most, if they want to draw out the fight between um, Genos and Sonic, which is mostly off-screen, if I remember correctly, in the manga. You don't get to see the fight with Genos and uh, and um, Sonic. It's it's mostly Saitama and Fubuki exchanging their dialogue as Genos and uh, Sonic are fighting in the background, and then they show back up, and, you know, it's kind of a stalemate between them. Um... But the thing that everybody's expecting, the thing that we want to see the most, I'd say even more than King and his otaku-ness, uh, or Fubuki and her her person, her assets. She has great assets. She's fucking psychic. She'd wreck your ass. No, no, no. I love. Uh, no, no. I think more than that, we want to get to Garo. Oh yeah, fucking Garo. Garo is... He's a badass, and you don't want to fuck with him. But at the same time, he's an hilarious character to watch. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Because there's certain points where, due to Garo's personality, I'm kind of rooting for him. You know? <laughs> like, like seriously, I am. Especially if you've read the webcomic. Uh, you get to the point where he reveals the whole reason why he does what he's doing, why he's hero hunting, why he's trying to become what he is. Um, it gets a little bit like at one point it's like he's just kind of like a spoiled brat that's just, you know, he's a spoiled brat but he's so ungodly strong that there's nothing nobody can do to stop him. Uh, there's nothing that anybody can do. So, at that point, it gets a little bit that, and then and, and throughout the fight with Saitama, where he basically just loses his all will to live, that just gets depressing after a while, after Saitama beats him down so goddamn much. But those scenes where he's introduced, and he goes on his hero hunt, and, you know, first scene where he shows up in the Hero Association and just creams all the A-class heroes there and just beats the shit out of everybody, and, you know, Sitch is just there, like, weeping in a fetal position as Garo walks out, and he's just like, I'm gonna kill all the heroes! That's what we're doing today! Um, his fights against, uh, let's see here, fights against Tank Top Master, well, no, he takes out Tank Top Vegetarian, and then Tank Top Master, and then Moomin Rider included in that. That's all going to be in this season for sure. Um, he also has a brief fight with uh, Golden Ball and uh, Spring Mustachio, two characters that already appeared in Season 1, whose uh, their episodes just aired in the English dub. That was a good one. Uh, and uh, eventually moving on to the current story arc that we are right now, where uh, he um, is, is uh, meets up with Metal Bat and has the battle with him, and then, you know, is introduced into the Monster Association and shit like that, and it starts to fall on a track with the webcomic a little bit more. This is right around the time that the, that the um, Marota version is, is uh, differing and splintering off from the webcomic, because in case you didn't know, that whole shit with Saitama entering the uh, the Super Fight Tournament, all that shit was not in, or Siryu, that, that, all that shit was not in the um, webcomic. I believe in the webcomic around this time, Genos ends up fighting with... Um, Garo and then bang and bomb show up and just fuck up Garo's day just fuck him up and then that's what you know he gets beaten down and then that's how he gets taken into the monster association so what I think is gonna happen though um this is not just for the anime but also just in the manga what I think is gonna happen is right now currently in the manga Garo is trying to confront watchdog man yeah so, what I think is going to happen is, you know, because Saitama and Genos are off doing their own thing right now, uh, Bang and Bomb still might, you know, have an interaction with Garo, but I think Garo is just going to get the ever-loving shit beat out of him by uh, Watchdog Man. It's just going to cut back to Garo, like, a mangled mess on the ground, and Watchdog Man's just sitting on top of him, like, just licking his paw, you know? And then he jumps off to go deal with some other monsters and something, and Garo is just like, Ugh! And then that's when the monsters, so that's when everybody shows up and takes him back to the Monster Association and connects back up to the um, webcomic version where he meets up with Psychos and everything, and then that, you know, take the boat from there. Um, 
Yeah, that, that's what I think is going to go down there. But that, that's just is my theory. But the fight I want to see the most in this in, in the season, even if you want to end out the season, even if you don't make it up to where we are right now in the uh, in the manga, what I want to see absolutely Metal Bat versus Garo. Metal Bat in general, just the Metal Bat scene where he just goes on this war path where he fights against, fuck, okay, Junior Centipede, the, the, the grass creature, Raphael Dawn, Senior Centipede, uh, Elder Centipede, and then uh, event finally Garo. He goes on this just final boss gauntlet video game style, like six fucking enemies in a row, progressively getting stronger, from di t Tiger all the way to Dragon. I don't know what you would classify Garo at this point, uh, before he goes into his, like, evolved states. I don't know if you would consider him Dragon. I would consider him, like, you know, Demon Plus, you know, maybe. Maybe he is Dragon at this point. I don't know. When he, when he gets into his evolved states, no question about it, he's Dragon Plus possibly God level. But, um, right at the moment, I'd say he's in, like, in the higher echelon of Demon in just his normal form. But, um, it, it, Metal Bat is, is great, you know? And you gotta remember, like, the scenes with his fights, you know, they, 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 there are a lot of chapters, there are a lot of chapters, but it's like all just one continuous fight, basically, broken up occasionally by the Super Fight Tournament, but, you know, he, he, the, the way he fights, his moves, the face expressions he gets when he's, like, really fucking pissed off, it would, it would be great be absolutely great so even if you're gonna end it's not when it wouldn't be really saitama oriented that's the weird thing about this fine about this season even, even if it does come back it's not going to be really focused on saitama all that much um the first start it would be about king and then finding out fubuki and then mostly after that garo would be the main character saitama would only show up really as kind of supporting in many cases um the fubuki part's probably the part he would have the most relevance but beyond that not really much to go on here um, and then the Super Fight Tournament, but even the Super Fight Tournament, you know, Saitama hasn't really begun a lot of screen time recently, not a lot of it anyway. Um, but yeah, hey, maybe though, maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get, maybe we'll get the best of both worlds. Maybe we'll get King, Fubuki, freaking Garo's introduction, fighting against Tank Top Master and all the hero, all the A-class heroes. And then he goes and takes on Metal Bat, we get to see all the shit with him. And then, uh, the Super Fight Tournament, we'll get all of that in Season 2. Uh, maybe even the conclusion of all that stuff where we are right now, I don't know. Uh... But, uh, hey, who knows? Maybe we won't even get 12 episodes. Maybe it'll be more. Maybe they'll see that they have a kind of a cash cow on this. Because they really do. Really do. Um, I would be supremely disappointed if Madhouse says to themselves, Nah. One, one's good. There's no way. It's, it's, it's not going anywhere. Now, there's still a lot of popularity for this series. Even after about... It's been about a year. Getting close to a year since Season 1 came out. But, yeah. What do you think about that, guys? Uh, who, who would you like to voice... Garo, uh, and this is the Japanese in both English, which would, you know, if there's a season two, there's definitely going to be a dub of season two at some point. Uh, so who would you like to voice Garo? Who do you think you could pull that shit off? Um, I'm not sure. I'd have to think about that. But what are your high expectations for season two? Uh, what scenes are you the most excited to see? Is it the scenes with King uh, freaking out? Is it the scenes with, you know, like him and intercounting Saitama and like the playback? I, I love the way Saitama and King, you know, play off each other, you know? Like they're just, they're just buddies, you know? They're just friends. They both know, they're both kind of in these, you know, King knows that he's a fraud and, you know, Saitama understands that King took all of his fame and glory, but he doesn't care. He's just like, oh man, you're, you seem like a cool dude. You have, you're pretty good at playing video games, I play video games with you, you know, whatever, man, um, is it Fubuki, you know, and, and the shit that she does, or is it the man himself, the man, the myth, the legend, Garo, or Metal Bat, I'm going with Metal Bat, I'm most pumped for Metal Bat, okay, all right, well, anyway, thanks for watching, guys, uh, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, all that good shit, this is Teching101, signing out.